All right, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Oh, man. It's wild around here tonight, boy, I tell you. Wild around here. All right. How we doing? How we doing? Can you feel it? Are you vibrating? Are you digging it? Is it winter frequencies around you or what? I got some notifications. I got to <laughs> I got to share with you guys. I'm going to tell you guys where I'm at. I'm at a secret location that no one knows about, I guess, cuz you guys must not be watching the old videos if you're new around here and if you're from around here a while, I guess you don't forgot where I'm at. Let me put the little fireplace in there too. So that's very nice. Okay. All right. Holy guacamole. Man, these notifications I'm getting are off the chain. And you guys are going to love them tonight. But here we go. All right. Let me see what I got to do here. I got to find my little thing here. Get onto this hair. Get onto this hair. Turn my volume down. All right, here we go. What's up, Nevada? There's Donna from Washington, Alabama. We got some Alabama. Alabama in the house. You're at your, yeah, my other home. Actually, it kind of is. Actually, I mean, kind of. Fire looks good. Let me see if I can do something here. Oh my gosh, it actually works. Does that work? Oh my gosh. Ugh. How's that? That's a little better. Oh, now I can't see this. Hold on. Man, this, you know, you guys don't understand what all this takes to set up this, all this stuff. And I'm a boomer or whatever they call it, like old people. Okay, how's that? That's good, right? All right. Sorry, Stacy can't be here. I don't want to give her the business or nothing, but uh, it's her own fault. <laughs> She'll be here in a little bit. She's, uh, she's in rare form lately. Okay. Yeah, I said it, if you're watching over there. All right. No, I'm not at my mom's house. I'm in the Learning Center. If you guys uh, follow our channel, uh, two years ago, we dug a great big hole in the ground here and we built a root cellar. Watch those videos. It's called ICF. It's called the Insulated Concrete Forms. It's made out of um, like styrofoam. Styrofoam wall outside, styrofoam wall inside. Concrete goes in the middle. So actually below my feet. I have an enclosed concrete box, so it's also a storm shelter. It's also a, you know, nuclear fallout. <laughs> I mean, it's heavy duty, okay? And then on top of the root cellar, aka bomb shelter, aka fallout shelter, uh, I built this learning center here. And this is also where we have, here, I'll show you guys. I'm going to do a tour on the channel here in a second, but let me show you. This is where I have our shower okay if you guys uh follow the channel and on the reason why we have light switches and stuff too is we have solar power only on this building here pretty much we have two outlets in the house next door but only on the first level that's the shower that i built i had to hand make this uh shower setup and everything because we're gravity fed we live off of rainwater and those copper pipes if you guys are following what copper is so good for uh, we got the copper pipes in there so that's uh, where we take our shower and that's how we start our shower right there. Uh, it's a pretty nice setup. I have that all on video for you guys so you guys can check it out. If you guys join the university, welcome to the university. Man, you guys are awesome. And we are really going to lay out some awesome information at the university. University.offgridwithdougandstacy.com. The show must go on. <laughs> Oh, nobody will get that. Maybe the Murphys. Maybe if Tia's watching, she'll get it. Okay. All right. Good evening. From Indiana. You Hoosier, you? 
What is your wood? Who is your wood heat mate? Oh, this is a Regency. This little stove right here is called the Regency uh, at our house, you know, next door where we actually live. This is the other building I told you. Uh, that's where we have our wood cook stove and that's a Pioneer Princess and that heats our whole entire cabin which is only like seven under 600 or 700 square feet it's like 600 some change square feet and uh, that takes care of heating that and gives us hot water over there and then we put that in for the hot water here to take showers here because in the summertime and the fall and the, all that stuff we shower outside I built a whole outside gravity fed shower our channel has so many videos that you guys should be watching, and you're not, because I can see the analytics, you are really missing out on all this great, free, super-duper good information. Um, but this little fire here keeps this room warm, no problem. Yeah, you guys can go and watch all of our old videos. And you know, for a while, uh, YouTube, when you, here, I'll show you guys right now. I'd love to show you guys real time how to operate. All right, I'm going to go to Doug and Stacy's channel here. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do this right off your phone, okay? I'm going to get a little education in before I tell you guys about these notices that I'm getting. All right, so here's Doug and Stacy on your mobile, okay? Now, if you guys go right here, you can see all the little different sections. There's uh, home, videos, shorts. I don't really do shorts that much. Live, that's where we are tonight. So if you guys miss a live show and you're looking for it, that's where it is on the live tab on your mobile. Playlist, those are the playlists, and then we have a community tab. Like in the community tab today, I posted about never forget, right? Did you guys remember? You know, you do remember, right? The Biden administration was using OSHA to backdoor Congress and mandate vaccines through your employer. Remember all that? <laughs> remember how many Trump uh, wars Trump was going to start? And I've lost count on how many the Biden administration actually has going. <laughs> but never forget, okay? That the Supreme Court told them you can't be doing that. And that's only when they stopped is when they told them no thank you. But otherwise, they probably would have kept going full steam ahead. So that's the community tab. It's always lit there. It's a good time. So if you go to playlists, then you can go through like here's my composting toilet system. Right? I have all those videos showing you guys how to set it up, how to go through it, how to maintain it. Here's the solar powered workshop. That's what I called it. Uh, but that's the whole thing you guys can see from start to finish how we've dug the hole in the ground and the whole nine. Here's my off-grid root cellar build so you guys can see that part of it. I separated it out for you. We have a complete bee collection right there for all the beekeepers. I did a little firewood chainsaw videos. Uh, let's see, which ones are really good? Fermenting. Stacy has all of her fermenting videos in there. Uh, we did some travels. You know, We put that in there just for kind of let you guys know who we are. Uh, we were on... Uh, living big in a tiny house a couple million views on that actually there's our chicken coop video i made uh the most watched chicken coop video on youtube is still our 6.57 6.8 million uh, videos so we have animals the greenhouse build that i built back in the day how to cook with your solar oven there's natural remedies natural cooking and then there's the off-grid rainwater shower right there so we have all those playlists and when it's a playlist, that means it's kind of walking you through the whole start to finish part of it. Okay. So you guys could check that out. And oh, what I forgot to show you was, let me go back. Also, see the videos? All right. See where it says videos there? That has popular and they brought back the oldest tab. So you guys can go to all your favorite creators and hit the oldest tab. And it'll take you to your, their very first video. So if you want to get to know them and see if they're lying or not. <laughs> then you can go through and start watching all their oldest videos that they ever put up. And you can see old Porky Doug there with his dark old beard. And you can basically see us kind of getting older and never be sick actually. Because all these videos we put up. And at one time I was doing videos every day for two and a half years. So we're living the lifestyle. We got it all recorded on history right here and we share it for free so you guys can glean from it because you're going to need it. I'm just here to tell you <laughs> there's wars popping off wars, rumors of wars, you know, all this stuff's going on. And I do kind of worry about you guys because, you know, we're pretty solid. We're pretty tough. 
we got our systems pretty much in place. A lot of people are just starting off on their journey. That's why we started the university, university.offgridwithdougandstacy.com. You guys could join that if you want. Really don't care if you do or don't, but it's to your, it's to your advantage if you do. <laughs> and we're, we're building an awesome community in there. And it's so also too, right? So the overlords uh, can't tell us what to talk about, uh, you know. Also, I might add, I, I was just thinking about this the other day. We also keep money out of the overlords' pockets, right? YouTube and Facebook and all them. They're super rich, filthy rich, doing all disgusting things with their money. Did you guys see Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress the other day? Ugh. So this way we bypass them and we build our own community with the servers that we're providing. And then we just take care of each other with information and funds and all the money stays in our community, man. This is pretty good. I'm, I'm, it's pretty exciting. Also at the university, uh, what we're going to be doing is special giveaways and stuff like that for you guys. Because this is like going to be our real tight-knit community. So we have our Homestead Homie group on Facebook that you guys could go there and check out. We have about 50, 60,000 people in there. We're all sharing stories about living on the homestead and our trials and tribulations and watching the kit rails. <laughs> stuff like that. I don't know if Stacy's going to come over or not. Not. She probably thinks that I started without her, so she doesn't want to come in. She was running late. She was out with her girlfriend today. They had to do a little bit of a storage run. We grow 90% of your, our own food in case you're new around here, but we buy 10% of it here and there. And we had she had did a Costco run today, and she was running late. All right. Here we go. Here we go. That's my water right there. We live 100% off rainwater. We do filter the water in case you guys are wondering. I did a lot of research lately, especially, but before I kind of thought about it, but not as hardcore as I am now. But aluminum, you can uh, filter it out, the particles. You got to have some really small filters, which we already do. We have carbon filters and like low micron filters already. And, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you guys, man. That stuff touches everything. You just do the best you can, but it all is going to boil down to your immune systems, making sure your gut is in very healthy condition so you can fight off all this stuff. You're being bombarded on the daily with all the toxicities. Okay, you guys are actually, we're going through toxicity overload right now. It's very true. It's very true. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm trying to find my university and I'll leave some links for you guys. And we're working on updating the website at our regular website, offgridwithdougandstacy.com. And it will also, you know, be on there for like a hyperlink. All you gotta do is like hit the button and it'll take you there. But today, I'll leave it in the comment section for you guys. All right, now we can answer some questions. I don't really know how this is gonna go because I don't know where Stacy is. And you guys are on my phone here. I'll text her on this phone. <sighs> What's her number? Man, you guys, do you guys know your phone numbers or do you got to have it in your phone to use it? I'm looking. What is it? I was sick for no reason for the last five months. Man, it's terrible. All right, I'm giving her some more business, and then I'm all about you guys. All right, there we go. I gave her the business. Now I'm going to get back on the live show. Boom, going to the live tab. I showed you guys how to use your phone tonight. That's awesome. Some folks don't really know how to navigate that stuff. I was thinking about doing a video about it. All right, wow, Doug's got a burner phone. No, I keep a couple phones. Because you know what? We have the Missouri Tea Company. If you guys buy anything from us, uh, tea, chocolate tea, the rest and digest, which is helping people sleep all around the globe, actually. We ship it all over the place. Thumbs up, you guys. There's 4,500 people, only 1,700 thumbs up. Plus, i got to get into my notifications. But yes, uh, so we have a phone for the Missouri Tea Company. I called some uh, folks today. Everybody wants to know where their books are at. So here's the notifications. All right, gee whiz, how long did that take? 14 minutes, not too bad. The homesteading 
booklet is finished. Okay, I have it in my hands. This is the first copies, the first run. The second run is going to be a little different, but so you guys can get the first run. If you already ordered it, it is already in the mailbox or will be tomorrow as well. So you will be getting this by the end of the week with your other stuff too. If you ordered other stuff, it'll come as well. Stacy's Remedy book for the 564 time <laughs> is at the printers. Okay, is at the printers. We will have that book here within like the next week or two. Okay, they should, we had to do some grammar fixes and we had a, a super cool person helping us with that. I forgot your name right off the top of my head and I don't have you loaded up right here, so to cheat. So, but thank you very, very much. And so we got all that done for you guys. And, uh, you know, it's at the printers. I have no control. I have no delivery expectation date. I don't call them every day like you guys do me. Where's the books? Where's the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? Where's the books? Where's the books? I put this order in before Christmas. Where's my books? Where's the books? Where's the... I don't do that. I know they have the books and the books are good here. And you guys should know us as soon as the books show up. We've already done this before. We will get them out the door exponentially. All right. So those are my big notifications. 14 minutes in. Not too bad. But while I got you guys, I'll, I'll share a little bit about the homesteading uh, life book here and read you some of my handiwork I put down for you. <laughs> all right yeah a lot of people think what is a homesteading what is a homesteader let me tell you guys how i broke it down for you all right oh let's see here so in case you missed it let's see i suggested station i started with a thousand foot garden so let's see da, da, da. started the best you can uh-oh, I guess I gotta read my own book here. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see some questions while I'm doing this. Doug needs a book on building the homestead. No, I, you guys, you writing these books is kind of something else. You know, I'm not really, uh, I'm an eighth grade dropout, first of all. Okay, so some of you guys, I have somebody on Twitter talking about my grammar. <laughs> oh, that doesn't bother me. I have been very successful in my life, and most people that have left school have turned out to be pretty successful, but I have done that well for myself. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty bad at the grammar skits. Here, Stacy went to college, and the lady called up and said, oh my gosh, there's so much problems in her remedy book. <laughs> so, college, no college, whatever. Oh my goodness, stop the madness. All right, man, I couldn't find my introduction, y'all. I have an introduction and everything. Pretty good, right? All right, Stacy and I left the city over 14 years ago and set up a sustainable farm on 11 acres. We have zero experience in growing food, building structures, or managing livestock. That is a fact, okay? And here we are now teaching millions of people, literally, how to do this stuff. And we've been at it for over 15 years, and we have a bazillion hours in. That's one thing they say. If you guys want to um, learn something, you need to find experts in their field who have 10,000 hours plus in what they're trying to teach you what to do. If they don't have 10,000 hours in, move on. Okay. And I also was listening to another mentor and he was saying that if you guys want to learn stuff, and I already know this, when you find a mentor and you latch on to them and you stay around them and you learn everything that they have to teach and you implement it and you stay with them over and over and like at the university you guys don't just go to the university and watch one video you watch that video over and over and over because what happens is i'm going to try to do this with my hand here here's the level of frequency or listening that we're all partaking in right now but as i say something interesting some of you will stop listening bounce up here and retain what i said that was interesting ponder on it for a moment and then you'll drop back into the conversation here. And now we'll be talking about what we're talking about. So you've missed that little part because you were, you know, squirrel in your mind. So that's why when you guys watch another movie, like you watch it two, three, four times, you think, wow, I never saw that before. I never caught that. Or you read a book and you're thinking, I never read that in here before. That's why. So that's why you want to be very repetitive if you're serious about learning you want to be very repetitive about your information. Don't just take it in one time. Some of you all read the scriptures. How many times have you read the scriptures? And all of a sudden something jumps out at you and you're like, I never read that before. <laughs> like Peter's 
vision. Just read the next paragraph. <laughs> wow, it's about the people. It has nothing to do with food. I never read that before. <laughs> uh, Stacy, paging Stacy, where are you? All right, let's call her on the phone, y'all. This is crazy, right? Thought I was playing, didn't you? My finger's doing okay. I'm going to put some more uh, stuff on it while you guys are here. Now she's not going to answer her phone. This is all the stuff I go through, y'all. You have no idea my trials and my tribulations. <laughs> Phone's probably in her truck. Because when she jumped out, she was running because she was late. All right, I'm going to tell. Hurry up! Oh, my goodness. If you only knew all the things I go through. So, figuring out... Oh, here, let's go back to my introduction here. So, I was talking about what is a homesteader, right? So homesteader, what so what is a homesteader? What is homesteading? I said Wikipedia, you know you guys can Wikipedia this stuff. Homesteading is a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. It is ca characteristic ah, it is characterized by sustenance agriculture, home preservation of food, and may also involve a small scale production of textiles, clothing, craft work for household use or sale. Pursued in different ways around the world and in different historic eras, homesteading is generally determined from rural village or commune living by isolation. <laughs> Why isolation? What are you sneaking around for? Oh, I didn't know. I thought you were Let's go. That. Are you coming over? Everyone wants to know where you're at. Hmm? Yeah. She'll be here in a little bit, y'all. She's trying to sneak my food in. It's 7.30. <laughs> Man, I tell you guys everything. I'm so truthful with you guys. I tell you what, we don't hide nothing around here. All right, poor Stacy. No, I'm not being mean. You guys are crazy. Four o'clock, we're supposed to eat dinner on Sunday night. This is the one appointment that we have every single week is for you guys, right? And she knows. So it's, you know, it's not very cool for her to be like that. Especially, you know, because she was out shopping. No problems, you know what I mean? All right, so modern homesteading often uses renewable energy options, including solar and wind power, which are both non-sustainable uh, energy sources at all or reliable. Many also choose to plant and grow heirloom vegetables and raise heritage livestock. Homesteading is not defined by where someone lives, such as in the city or the country, but by the lifestyle choices they make. So this is kind of a handy little dandy. It's supposed to fit into your pocket. It had a little miscommunication there. <laughs> uh, but it is pretty good. So if you guys want to get that, it's at offgoodwithdougandstacy.com. I'll leave a link for you guys. All right. Her. And Stacy's Remedy book will be here shortly. Like so soon. We'll get it out the door so fast. All right. I wish she'd hurry up so I could eat and stop talking and then you guys could just talk with her. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so the finger thing is doing pretty good. Uh, it's softer. It's going down. It doesn't hurt as much either like if I hit it on something. You know what I mean? So that's going good. So the castor oil is working on that. It does take a while. So like if you guys are into this instant gratification stuff, it's going to take a while to get the, uh, you know, to get that stuff broken down a little bit. But that was a quite a bit of a bump too. There was a lot of tissue going on inside of there. See it? She is always late. I know. All right, 
you guys are something else. Some of y'all have been so politically correct and demasculized and all that stuff. You don't even know how people are supposed to operate anymore. You think it's all foofy, foofy and stuff. <laughs> it's amazing. Most people wouldn't even let you in on that kind of stuff. Like this, what I'm talking about, right? Would I just give it all to you guys? All right. Ontario. There have been lots of trails around Gainesville, Florida for the last two days. And I saw, if you guys also noticed, there's a, a thing coming. What do they call that thing? California is about to get dumped on like nobody's business. Let me tell you guys what they're calling this thing. Uh, they're, they're, they're letting you guys know already that they've chemtrailed enough now they're going to cause massive flooding. Los Angeles faces a rare high risk of flash flooding as atmospheric river takes aim at Southern California. Well, what a coinky dink. That's where we just uh, learned about the chaffing was from the nice reporters in Southern California. I appreciate them sharing that information with us. Now, there's Stacy. Yay! <gasps> oh, you almost lost him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, this is so something to do all the time, I tell you. All right, there you go. Is that a new stand? Look at it, the fancy little legs on it. Well, how's everybody? Man, what is going on here? What kind of stuff going on? Talk with them. Where's your phone? Oh, I don't have it. Uh huh. I already told them you didn't have it. I don't have my phone. I'll go get my phone. Yeah. Just show you my new little find today. Yeah, those are good books. You guys read about the Foxfire books? Have you ever heard about them? The Foxfire books. It's a great series of books on self sufficiency and you know taking care of yourself, pretty much. Well, have you guys been to this place called the Half Price Bookstore? So there's a half price bookstore. So look what I found. This is the first one. Foxfire book. It's got hog dressing, log cabin building, mountain crafts and food. Could have wrote it myself. Planting by the signs, snake lore, hunting tales, faith healing, moonshining, and other affairs of plain living. Man, that is our whole life right there. So I guess the books came out in like 1967 or Can so. we get a thumbs up because Stacy made it to the show? You guys are only 2,000 thumbs up, 5,000 people. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, what a fun book. Yeah, so they were written. So I guess it was 450 in 1968. So when this one when they came out. But they're they're pretty cool. So was it two bucks now? No, I was a little, it was a few more dollars that I paid for today. But I looked it up on like on Amazon or wherever. It's like this one was like thirty-four dollars to buy by itself. So. And yeah, she brought home some store-bought kombuchas. Sure, we drink some store-bought kombuchas sometimes. I mean, what's up? Well, man? I was gone. <laughs> I was gone, so he needed something quick to we, eat. We we made more kombucha in our time than you old butter drink store-bought or made kombucha. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta have a break. Sometimes you're in between things. She just right? grabbed it and brought it home, and here you see I'm eating it right here in front of you. Okay. But if we do get some, we get yeah. Synergy is pretty much a really good one. Or GT. And then uh, yeah, GT. And then we also get uh, Tom 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 is uh, another kombucha that we get, but they're local in Missouri. You can't get them anywhere else, pretty much. They've got a few states I think they go to, but. And we know him personally. He has his uh, little kombucha shop down there in St. Louis area. I guess she went to go get her phone. Yeah, I know. I always bite back a little bit, too. <sighs> you get these crazy comments. I like to get them right back at you. Three, 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 three. We got all that. The three is a really good number in Hebrew, if you guys ever check that out. Three. Nine's a good number. Seven's a great number, obviously, for reasons obvious. Oh, I couldn't pronounce the word. The word. Show us how to make moonshine. We don't make any, but we have showed you guys how to make brandy, and we have that on our videos for free. Go lay down. She's happy to see you. She better back up. So this behind us here, this is like a USB charger, right? So when I put this thing in, I put an outlet over there and an outlet over here, and then I put an outlet right here. And I put this USB charger, like you plug all your USB stuff in, and I put that over there by the solar stuff. Well, it was over there, and I really wasn't using it that good, so I thought, man, that's... And we had a table here. I've moved this thing around like 10 times since uh, we've had it done in here. 
So then I had a table over here, so I thought, well, I'll just put the charger thing here, because then I moved it around, and then I had the table here, and I'll just put my stuff on here and charge it, and then I thought, that's stupid. So it just sits here. I haven't even really used it in a long time. But that's what that is, is a USB uh, port charging thing, and that's powered with our solar power. Well, Off Grid with Lee, Barry, and Chloe says, I would be so proud of their ACV mother. It was massive. It's crazy how it is. I know. They can get really, really thick. And you'll get a lot of them if you guys start doing the ACV. You'll have a whole hotel, they call it, Scoby Hotel. And then Catherine says the castor oil information really works. And it truly, 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 truly does. It's amazing what castor oil can do. Tammy's got her brandy going. Lots of people have brandy going. Such a fine old seat, brandy. So if you did your brandy in like when it was apple season, if it was like September, October, whenever it was, and you did your apples, you can go six to 12 months and just let it go. It'll just be sweeter if you don't. So about 10 to 12 months, it'll be rocking. That's why I usually like it about 10 months. It's perfect. But six, seven, eight, you know, just try it and see what you think. All right. Man, Jessica did a ginger bug. And Ricky says he's got those books, the Foxfire books. It's always cool. I, we were did a, did a, a show, I guess it was a, quite a few weeks ago, talking about, you know, I got a bunch of our books out and we were going over some of them. You can get so many awesome books. The older, the better. You know, I have a lot of livestock books, gardening books from the 1940s and the 50s. And there's so much good information in those. I mean, even if you get in the earlier 1900s, there's so much really pertinent, wonderful information in those books. So start stocking up on books. Let's see. What else do you guys got going on? Oh, I need to buy some snake plants. Just learned about how much they filter your air. Yes. Did you see my snake plant back here? Yeah. They are great. Or they also call them mother-in-law's tongues. And I did a video. I think I did a thing on Instagram. That was a little while back. How important and easy. You know, we talk about doing these little changes throughout, you know, our lives to make us healthier. And, of course, the air that we breathe is very important, right? So one simple thing you can do to help filter the air in your home is to get the basic house plants. The snake plant, or the, like you see over here, or the mother-in-law's tongue is just amazing. The spider plant, philodendron, the golden pothos. I wish I had one in here. Over here, you can't see it. I have the aloe vera plant. Aloe vera works very well. Actually, mums, poinsettias, you know, all those plants that you can bring in your home. A lot of these tropical plants that you see, the little palms and all those, they're really great at filtering air. And there's lots of studies. You can look them up online. NASA did them on how beneficial they are to, to clean up the air in your room. Because our homes are probably one of the most toxic places that we can go. And you're in your home a lot and you're breathing a lot of those air. Um, and you want your air to be as clean as it can be. So just by adding house plants, they can help to do that. So right now is a good time. If you don't have any plants and you're wanting to add a little greenery to your home and help detoxify and clean up the air a little bit, they're all starting to come out into the stores. And actually, Aldi, um, I saw one of the ads, they have some plants, like the big plants, and uh, you'll get a, such a better price than if you would went to like the box stores like Home Depot or Lowe's to get some of those plants. So just start checking out, maybe adding some little plants to your, your home. Julie says that her ACV has not made a SCOBY yet. Sometimes that might, it might not do it. Or might, maybe you have to wait up quite a bit longer. Sometimes it may not do it. But if you're smelling it and it's moving on and doing its thing, um, and it starts to smell like vinegar, then you're doing the right thing. There's some microgreens in there. If you're not making microgreens, barefootmicrogreens.com. Check that out. Yeah, I put a little honey mustard on there, some fermented mustard. I put some of our honey in there and I grilled some onions.
It says, Johnny G, can we add more brine to our cabbage ferments? The last one we did got dry and some mold on top. Definitely, when you're watching it and it's starting to ferment and it looks like it's starting to lose some liquid from it, of course you can. Just make sure you're using good um, filtered water. And then what I generally do with the ferment, so let's say this is your ferment. I would just go ahead and sprinkle some salt on top, some um, Redmond real salt or some you know uh, unrefined salt on the top. Pour the filtered water to go. Um, and then you can also just stick, I like to use a, uh, what do you call them? Chopstick. Push it down in there so all the liquid kind of goes down in between all the little pieces of cabbage. And it's really important that you make sure that it goes and fills it up. And then if you need to put more water, put more water in there. Wipe everything up. If you did have a little mold, make sure, you know, you can clean all that up, pull it all out, make sure it smells okay. Um, if it got rancid, you probably don't want to eat it. Generally with a ferment, if it smells good, it's going to generally be good. But yeah, definitely you can add water. Cabbage, I like my cabbage to be very moist. I like the liquid because the cabbage juice is so beneficial. You could do it, take like a little shot. You could use it um, in your salad dressings or like let's say your stuff's all the way done and you ate all your ferment and you have some juice left and maybe you have time between your ferments fermenting and you need some ferment. You can just do the juice and just do a drink of it. So in the morning, if you want to do like a sauerkraut shot, you can do that. Sometimes I add a little bit of it, you know, a little shot of it in Molly, our dog, and her food. So she gets a little probiotic benefit out of it also. So it works out great like that. Oh, Shirley Carter just got here, you guys. Oh, Shirley Carter just got here, you guys. Tell old Shirley Carter when she's going to get her remedy book. Well, I'm eating over here. Come on, guys. Get in the comments section. Tell Shirley Carter when she's going to get her book. Oh, Barth Boston Rock says she so lays made her hair grow really long. That's Carmen. Carmen, your hair's already long, so it must be really long now. Yeah, it's like A Sparks is, lives in Kentucky and has many photos of chemtrails all over the skies. Today, they were like big X's all over. And we were kind of laughing and saying... That what is that new variation coming? The X, the new disease that's supposed to come, or virus. There's X's everywhere. Oh, Rhonda, Rhonda Kisner, with a large number of cloudy days, how's the solar working for you? Doug, how's the solar working for you? We use behind that. every solar system is an awesome generator. Period. Full stop. Yep, we've been using the generator a lot. Alita, can you put turmeric in with the garlic and honey? Yeah, you could do that. Oh, Martha, she's been making her own skincare using castor oil, and she's from Perth, Western Australia. Cool. No, she's talking about the remedy book, old Squirrely Shirley. She wants the remedy book. Tell her about the remedy book. The homesteading booklet is already done. Homesteading booklet will be here shortly. It'll be in your mailbox next week. I'm almost done. <laughs> no, we do not give no vaccines to our dogs or our cats or any of our animals. No shot is a good shot. So Whispering Hills of Heather says, I've tried kombucha twice now and I battle mold. So Whispering Hills of Heather, you might check and make sure you don't have mold in your house if you've done it a few times. Or if you tried it once and you got mold and you did it again, maybe your SCOBY had mold on it or got mold on it. Those probably might be the reasons. I see I'm on to sourdough starters now. So maybe check and see how your sourdough SCOBY is doing. Or if you have a crawl space or area that possibly could have mold and the mold spores are getting or was it around something that got moldy? Like, did you have a banana or an apple or a lemon or something that got moldy around it? Oh, Jacqueline on her castor oil did the liver detox for the past week and have slept great. I'm just telling you guys, there's countless amounts of people. I mean, it's just crazy on the benefits that this is giving to men and women. And it's just totally amazing. Yeah, if you drink the, the rest and digest tea and then get on your sheets, boy, look out. 
So, oh, Kim says, castor oil has been working well. Some of the best nights sleep working on my fingernails and working it in on them. Yeah, I always definitely, I rub it on my hands. I even notice I kind of get, you know how you kind of get kind of like the little darker spots on your hands, um, the older you get, that I just been rubbing the castor oil on my hands and I've been rubbing it on my nails just consistently, you know, just doing it. I leave the little bottle just right out on my counter where my sink is and I just constantly do it and it's made a huge difference. I can tell in my hands too. And um, someone was asking about like their, their feet are dry, you know, what can I use? Um, actually, it's one of the Lamish girls. And I just told her castor oil is amazing what it can do for you. So she's starting to use castor oil too. I like my dog a little salty too. Because I've always been that way. Helen says my brandy on the brandy, the fruit molded, should it mold? Something, the very top part that's closest to the oxygen could mold. It's not going to do anything. You can just kind of scrape that part off and the rest of it should be great. Farm Dog City Girl, am I able to drink the bottom of the jar? My so late? It's kind of the sediment. I just dump that out and I start over. So you know, you don't. I wouldn't. You don't need to drink that. Hello, new set of vlogs. Welcome to the channel. Day night says, mm -hmm. what is the best to use for the gum disease? So a great one for your your mouth and gums, you can oil pull, like we've been talking about castor oil. You can go to our link on OscarWithDougAndStacey.com. And where else is it? The link, Doug. Where else can they find it? So besides Oscar and Doug and Stacey. Well, you, you could go there and find where the castor oil is. And um, you can oil pull. So put a teaspoon or two in your mouth and swish it around like that. And then after a minute or two, spit it in the trash can. And then it could help the health of your mouth and your gums. Or if you don't have the castor oil, you can use coconut oil, unrefined coconut oil, and you can swish it around, but you need to do that a little longer, like 10, 15 minutes. But it'll, you'll see if it helps the teeth. It helps to pull out the, the bacteria and the toxins. Sure, oregano is good for chickens. A lot of herbs are. You guys could have herbs around, they can have them. So what I do in my, in my feed, I grow a lot of oregano. You can just dry it out, and if you don't, grow it. You can buy it. I would buy it in bulk if you need to buy it at the store um, online or however like that. Timber! Man, we're a little uh, a little phone heavy here on this thing here. Man. Alright, hang on y'all. I gotta get you straightened up here. It was a wild ride tonight. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's a little better. All right. Are you dizzy? It's crooked. It's crooked? There. So the oregano works great. Just like <clears throat> oregano would be great for us. You know, it's antibacterial. It's going to help with your immune system. Same thing with the chickens. So sprinkle some in your chicken feed and that's how I do it. It makes your chicken feed smell nice. The mice don't like to get in it either. So in my trash can, when I make my feed, I always I'll sprinkle a little layer, stir it up, sprinkle a little layer. And I always use the oregano. Always. Especially in the winter months. Yeah. All right. How'd you guys like that ride? All right, the university, I'm leaving the link for the university if you guys want to sign up. What we are doing right now is taking some of these older videos that you guys might not have seen, actually, because the way YouTube hides them around. And we're putting them on this uh, site for you guys, so it'll stay there forever, just in case, you know, they start deleting channels, <laughs> which you haven't never heard of that before, have you? And that way, we always have it secure. Okay. Uh, Gregory says he shared the brandy at Christmas, 12 month old, and it was a hit. Well, sure. So good. It is kind of fun. You know, it's something that. And it's you made like, it yourself. Yeah, that's what makes it extra special. Regina, don't ask silly questions, please. That's ridiculous. I won't even give it any time to answer because it's so ridiculous. We're in our learning center. If you guys remember, I talked about this earlier. <clears throat> two years ago, and we got the playlist to prove it, baby. 
we put in a box inside the ground, okay? A concrete box. It's a bunker, it's a bomb shelter, it's a tornado shelter, and it's our food storage. It's our root cellar. On top of that concrete box, we built this room, this building, and we put solar panels on this building, and we call it like the solar powered workshop, or it's going to be actually the learning center too. When you guys come here on the property, you're going to see how solar power works, how it hooks up, how the hot water works, how our shower set up, the, everything, everything. Okay. And that's why we built this room. And so we've been, you know, I've been trying to get it together to where we can start having you guys here at the property. And I'm like this close. So I keep talking about it, but soon it'll be actually actionable. And then also in here, we have a hot water tank that heats water. And we have, we actually made an inside shower because we always had an outside shower. So now we have an inside shower in here too. Hey, listen here. Every Wednesday night, at 7.30, we're going to have live shows in the university. When? We're going to get uh, in-depth stuff, really drill down on some topics. Every Wednesday night at 7.30 Central Standard Time, we're going to have live shows. We can have live shows in there. And unlike YouTube, you can actually post a comment in the video. And maybe you have a question about your ferment. You can share that picture right there so we can see it and we can answer your question university.offgridwithdougandstacy.com you guys are going to love it uh so the original issue was i smashed it in the log splitter maybe you weren't around then uh, i got a bunch of stitches in this finger a bunch of stitches in this finger i broke this finger the nail never fell off i got good fingernails uh but it you know, I got pretty messed up. So when it all started healing, I think it started creating a little scar tissue right there on that and uh, started getting bigger and bigger. And then, you know, it got really big. It has gone down. Oh, some. it's gone down a lot. Can you show it to him again? I did. You see? Yeah, it's crazy how much it went down. It looked like it was ready to bust and pop open. And now it's, he's been rubbing it every day. And it has been, is it three weeks or four weeks now? Three weeks? Yeah, it's the third week. Yeah, it's doing really good. It's way, it's probably way half. Less than half, maybe a third of the size now. And if you guys missed about the um, announcements or that I'm getting these notices, I got notice. I got notice that the Homesteading Life booklets are finished. So if you ordered one, it is going to be in the mail uh, coming up right here next week. And Stacy's Remedy book, I got notice, will be done in a couple of weeks, you know, a week or two. We had to do some fixing on that one. And then they got, you know, closed because of the holidays. And then they got zero degrees and they closed. They were closed for like eight or nine days, y'all, when that bad weather rolled through there in uh, Nebraska or somewhere. I don't know. And they were closed. I'm calling them. I'm like, closed? <laughs> so Deacon MMA says pothos are easy. So if you guys, maybe I'll run in the house and get one if you don't know what I'm talking about. Golden pothos is a great plant to grow. And I'm going to tell you. We, of course, we live off grid. Sometimes if we're gone and it's freezing cold out and the stove's not on, it can get really cold in our house. Let's say maybe we're even out of town and it's cold. It could get like freezing, you know, like 30 degrees in my house, 20 degrees. And I have plants and I have found, believe it or not, even though the golden pathos is a tropical plant, that they survive very well in the cold weather. I have never had any problems in all of our 15 years living here when we've been gone and it's been freezing, freezing cold, the golden pathos, for some strange reason, can, it makes it. It does very well. So it's a very, very hardy plant. And you just need, you'll start seeing it kind of get droopy or you'll start seeing yellowing leaves if you don't water it. So if you're one of those people that are like, I kill all my plants, you know, just when it's dry, water it. And they're incredible. And then the other thing that's incredible is you talk about um, a lot of people put like a root stimulator on plants when you're ready to... Um, like a hormone uh, on, on the plants, like when you're ready to plant them. And this is a really good way that you can do that. So all you got to do is if you have a golden pothos, let me go get it and I'll show you. You keep talking. Stacy, when you order your um, chicks, uh, you know, you can get them unvaxxed, okay? And that McMurray hatchery, they love vax, 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 vax. Don't get the vax, okay? Make sure you tell anybody that you order from they want them unvaxxed. They really push them, man. I never liked that. Are the books PDF? Stacy has a, um, are, what do you mean shareable? They'll download for you. If, if you get the PDFs, you can download them. No, we never made castor oil. That's one thing we've never done, actually. When will Leo 
Mr. B guy will be back uh, this April or, you know, springtime. He'll come up here and we're going to do a video. And he'll be at the only conference that Dr. Leo is going to be at in 2024 is the Homesteading Life Conference. So if you guys want to see Dr. Leo in person, get your tickets to the Homesteading Life Conference. We're almost sold out. It's a limited seating thing. It's our spring event in May. And it's going to be a blast. But he's only coming to that event for the whole year. That's the only... He's coming out and saying it and going back in. And you're not seeing him no more. So he told me to pump that up for you guys in case you cared. So, so. this is called Golden Papa. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this or had it. Um, and then what you can do is... There's a lot of things that we can't talk about on YouTube. Uh, you know, medical stuff, all this stuff. That's the stuff we're going to be talking about on the university. Plus, we're going to be drilling down on our systems and everything else, showing you guys in-depth questions, you know, answers, systems, you know, to live this lifestyle, okay? Like a lot of the videos on YouTube are good and all, but, you know, they have a little fill in them. You know, there's a lot of wasted space and stuff. We're going to be drilling down in teacher mode, and we're going to be walking you through the seeds, growing food, preserving food, off-grid living, homesteading, all of it. And even some other stuff like what happened to the tribe of Judah? And why are we calling those people over there them now? Just stuff like that. Things that could affect your life. Okay, so you know how when you get like a little plant, you know, you want to root it and get the roots to come out. So you're going to put this in your water. Don't put it in kombucha. But if you put it in your water, just like this, and then you're going to start getting little roots on it, and then you're going to transplant it. So this secretes something, you know, I'm not an expert on all that, but what this is, it's a great root stimulator. So if the other plants that you're trying to um, get moving, or maybe you have some cuttings from fruit trees or anything, you could even dip it in here a little bit. And the golden pathos, the juice from it or the liquid that from where you're rooting it, like I have little bitty jars and I put these in there and then it'll help with the roots to get them going when you plant them in the ground. So I really like the golden pathos and it is hardy as heck. It, it's a tropical plant that's found in the jungles growing crazy all around the trees. And then it does very well in cold weather, believe it or not, in their home. And I don't know how it does it, but it does. So, but get the plants in the house to help purify the air. Pathos, P-A-T-H-O-S. P-O-T-H-O-S. P-O-T-H-O-S. P-O-T-H. You can go to most any store, any place I have at box stores. I mean, Walmart, I'll carry them, Home Depot, Lowe's, the nursery, everyone will have these plants. But they're really wonderful. Yes, peace lilies are also good for air. That's right. This is M-T-K-N-I-V-E-S. It's a, a, nef, a knife knife. <laughs> it's a neck knife. And it's a handy dandy. I don't leave home without it. Okay? Moments Divine says, my home hasn't enough natural light for most plants. Our cabin doesn't have a lot of light. I hang them. I put hooks up and I hang them by the windows all over and they work great. Even some in the back corner that don't get a lot of light, they still do pretty well. You guys, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. YouTube is unsubscribing you guys at a monumental rate. They do not want us talking to y'all. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification bell. We're going to start putting up more videos coming up. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, 2024 is the year of learning, and it's also a big year for truth. There's going to be a lot of truth out there. All this candy-coated, silly stuff is going to get blown out of the water. You guys need some good dose of truth. We guys been coddled too long. So Buffy says the castor oil works so well for me. I'm now regular. Ha ha. <laughs> it's true. It'll get everything going perfectly. You'll be like a perfectly run engine. It's amazing. Those castor oil packs. Because one thing about the castor oil is they're very, very, it's gentle. If you want to get a castor oil pack or any of that set up, I'm leaving the link for our general store. And all you got to do is scroll down and you'll see the castor oil link that saves you money. So you guys can use that link and get your castor oil. And then use off-grid at checkout. You'll save 10% too at, uh, with over like 59 bucks or something like that. And then Julie Mains, we will be doing the sweet potatoes next week right here on Sunday night. Okay, we'll start our sweet potatoes next week.
Next week is the day. Also in the university, which is going to be different from YouTube now because we've already kind of done it there, but we're going to focus on giving away some stuff there. We, we work good with some affiliate folks and they, you know, they we're, we're going to have some real nice giveaways, real community stuff. We're going to have meetups. We're going to have live shows every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm working on that now. I got a big phone call with those guys tomorrow. I do like the comment section because you guys can leave your pictures there. I can see what you look like or what you want to show me or if you want Stacy to look at your ferments. We're going to focus really good on answering questions over at the university. Sometimes I'm hit and miss over here on the YouTubes, but over there it's going to be 100. We want you guys to fully learn and be engulfed in what you want to do. And we want to be there for you. And if it goes good, not, you know, I've already kind of paid for it, I guess you'd say. But if it goes good, I'll spend the time on it. And I'll get us an app and you can have an app on your phone instead of just using it via the computer and your web browser on your phone. It'll actually be an app that you just push it and it'll open up like YouTube and then you can go right after it. And you'll get push notifications every time we upload something new. Isn't that sexy? And dinner on a one to 10 was about a three. Oh, oh well. I made it in two seconds and the fire wasn't going Yeah, I could tell. Okay. I made your salad dressing and since I was straining my fire cider, I added some of the solids to the dressing and it was amazing. Oh, okay. She has yeah. a very acidic body. What are you going to do about it? Where is it? She just said she has an acidic body. What could she do? Well, so then you just need to... You know, start adding some more alkalizing type foods. Like? That would be helpful to help you with that situation. Like? So, you know, when you're, when you're, um, so let's see. Here, let me give you an analogy. So let's look at like meat. Like if you eat a lot of meats, like higher protein, that's going to be a little bit more acidic also. So a lot of times to help level that out. Adding hemp seeds are, is a good way to alkalize it. So maybe with some of your meals, you could even try adding hemp seeds to it. And that could be a way of doing it. And if you want to, you can even go online and look at alkaline type foods. Um, and it could, it could give you a list of the ones that you might like. Because there's, there's lots of food that you could do. But the thing is, is you don't want to do like an all alkaline diet. Because your body, you need a good balance of both. So, you know, adding, I mean, just if you eat well, you know, you get out, you're drinking good water, you're getting outside, you're getting movement, you're getting sunshine, you're grounding, barefoot grounding, you're getting out there and you're Stop you're eating, eating sugar. Yeah, because all those things are going to wreak havoc on your body. Highly processed shoot, uh, foods, your industrial seed oils, you know, you want to try to look at good saturated fats like coconut oil or tallow or ghee. Those things are wonderful to cook with and to eat good grass-fed butter. You know, your eggs are wonderful for you. Some nice leafy greens, you know, eating cruciferous vegetables, lots of those that'll help the body to help, you know, detoxify a lot of this stuff. So like your uh, Brussels sprouts, your cauliflower, your radishes, your broccoli, those things are great. Cabbages, sauerkraut, um, all those things will be marvelous. And just try not to eat fried foods, processed foods, all those things that could cause problems but go online you'll get like more of a list of all the different things and then even try maybe possibly some you know hemp seeds okay yeah craig i know everybody i know the max face to face no i know everybody <laughs> when this youtube stuff was started man i i made it a point to spend a lot of time you know checking out people's channels and seeing who is legit who's not you know just just always looking and seeing how the community is growing and i took an interest in a lot of people and i met a lot of people and I, we were speakers at a lot of places i know a lot of people in this space so yeah we know them luke skywalker is this you luke so i guess this is i your am wife. not your father <laughs> She says that her husband is a Mountain Dew addict. Oh, bleh. He has arthritis and I can't Oh, I wonder him. why. <laughs> I tell him that is bad for his health. Can you ask him to stop? So, Mountain Dew. Stop. Yeah. It's got, it's bro, it's got bromide in there. It's like a flame. You guys know where Mountain Dew came from? So that's what they used to call moonshine. Back in the day in the mountains, it was called Mountain Dew. And that's where they rolled that into from the Mountain Dew. 
All right, go ahead. So, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, it, it, it's very, very high in caffeine. So it's, it's going to eventually you keep doing this caffeine. You need more and more. It's just going to burn you out. It's terrible for your joints. It's terrible for your health. I don't know if you're doing diet or if you're doing the regular. Besides that, if it's regular, you're having high fructose corn syrup, which is highly processed, highly industrialized, um, you know, high fructose corn syrup, which is just terrible and terrible, terrible for the human body. And over Aspartame. time, well, I'm not there yet. So they're finding that that's causing, you know, like a hardening of the arteries and heart attacks. It leads to diabetes, lots of, uh, lots of other health issues, um, as well as if you're going to go the diet route with the aspartame, it's basically turns into formaldehyde inside the body and oh in your gosh, organs. Oh my gosh, y'all. What do you, what does have that for? It causes just <laughs> over time, you know, everyone's like, it's not bothering me and it's not bothering yes, me. It is. And year after year, you your start skin, noticing. Look at your health, look at your body. Yeah, people always say, oh, I'm just everything. getting older, I'm getting older, I'm going to, you know, I'm just, I'm going to get aches and pains. But no, you don't have to. If you eat correctly, if you eat good food, and it, eating good doesn't mean that it tastes bad. You know, if you really try your best and you can go to Aldi, you can go to a lot of these places, grow your own. And you can get good organic foods that are real foods that you cook from scratch. Um, and and you can start getting your health back a little at a time and stay out of the boxes, stay out of the, the fast food restaurants and all those kind of things. Start getting a little more prepared and putting good food and good fuel into your body. You know, a lot of people love their cars. They want to put gas in their cars that works well. They want to put good gas into their lawnmowers, you know. Otherwise, it won't work. If you put bad stuff in you, you're not going to work right either. So it's just these basic things. So if you really want the caffeine, maybe let's move down from Mountain Dew to tea. <laughs> Get some tea, black tea, and start doing that. Get some that. rest and digest and chocolate tea at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy .com. So, but, and just make little changes like that. But if you start doing that and you stop doing the Mountain Dew, and when you look at it, do you like, basically, you have to have that. It's like yeah. an addiction, you know. You, do you like being beholden to have to have something like that? That's yeah. ru ruined, like it's, it's ruling your life. So think of these things because they're taking hold of you and it is an addiction and it's not good for your body. You know? me, me and Zach talked about this too. Like Zach is over at American Homestead. He's legit all the way in a nice guy. Great family. You guys could go check them out. An American Homestead. But Zach's talked about this before. I've talked about it with him is that you guys, when the grid goes down, you guys are thinking about, you know, you won't be getting this and that and, you know, no, no electricity and no refrigerator, right? But what, what nobody really talks about are the zombies that are going to be everywhere because everyone's going to be in MSG withdrawal, all their high fructose corn syrup withdrawal, their sugar withdrawals, and that's why it's going to be a hot mess. Yeah, a lot of grumpy people. <laughs> um, Valerie says, do we feed our dogs raw food or kibble? Um, Molly, Welcome to the show, Valerie. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Molly's on a raw food diet. I make it, and I want to talk a little bit about something for you guys that I I found out, which I thought was totally fascinating, actually, yesterday. So if you guys don't follow uh, Dr. Karen Becker and the other guys named Rodney Habib, they wrote a book called The Forever Dog, which is amazing. It'll change your whole view on your dog, the food, and all that. They've just written another one called The Forever Dog Life, and the whole thing has a ton of recipes in there, all about dog treats, dog foods. You could cook it. You can make it raw. Um, lots of really good things like that. So they did a whole, like, they do Facebook uh, Facebook Live, and they'll do things, and they'll make things. So the big thing was there was a huge study that came out, and they were talking about um, dogs and green bananas. And I know for people, if we, you're, for all, all of us, the greener banana is better for us because the, the more ripe banana has you know, more, more sugar. sugar in it. Yeah. So, but these were green, green bananas, and they found for the dogs that it was anti-cancer, like tumor and immune system and all this wonderful stuff that it can help with. And uh, basically, you just get the banana, you could puree it up, put a spoonful on the food. Uh, they were putting them in like ice cube trays or little molds, and then they would smush them out and put them in the freezer, and then they would pop them out and give them to the dog. And then uh, the other thing they were putting the puree, like in old in marrow bones, you know how a lot of people have a peanut butter, they were putting it in there for the dogs. 
And then that way they're getting this wonderful dose of, you know, for the, of the banana, of the green banana. And it was so helpful for their immune system and, and for, you know, cancer fighting and all that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Give me a thumbs up if you thought that was cool because how many people can get green bananas and how cheap bananas are too, but a great dog treat and it's healthy for them. Oh, and then here's the other thing they talked about. Then they got the skin of the banana. So I guess it doesn't make any difference how old the banana is on this one. But then they were dehydrated because you can make flour out of the banana peel. Okay. So they were dehydrating the banana peels in the dehydrator. And then they would, um, you could, they could either just use the banana whole or break it up in chunks and give them to the dog as treats. Or you could grind them up and make them into flour, you know, add a little water to them. And then they were baking and making little dog treats and stuff out of that. And I'm like, wow, how cool is that? They said if the cats will eat it, the cats can do it too. But uh, I thought that's pretty neat. And we've been doing the raw food diet for the dogs for a long time. And the only time we really had a hiccup was when the vid started 2020, in 2019. Yeah. 2020, that year. Because uh, we, were, we had a couple dogs and we, they were eating a lot of food. And so I needed to go to the store. Um, to help supplement them a little bit at that time. Getting chicken so, quarters and stuff. Remember, yeah. they had a thing where you couldn't even buy like more than one bag or two bags. Like stuff. you couldn't buy liver. Like if you bought liver, that was considered your, your meat. Because I would like supplement with the gizzards, chicken gizzards and hearts and then livers and stuff. And because uh, you only get so many of that when you butcher your chickens. And uh, yeah, they would only let me get one. So it was hard. So I switched and I'm telling you, I switched to a good dog food. Um and I'll never do that again. You can totally see, you know, when your dog gets the eye boogers coming down, they're having some type of reaction or allergic reaction to the foods. And you could just tell she just wasn't right. And it's amazing the amount, her energy, how she looks, her coat. She doesn't smell. Her breath doesn't smell. She doesn't poop as much. I mean, it's just crazy the difference it is when I feed her real food. You guys are about, you know, you don't want to give them raw food. You can get food and cook it and just make them wonderful. And I mix it all up. I put lots of different things in there. It's good to put greens in there. I put sardines in there. I put, you know, liver in there. I'll put chicken hearts, gizzards. You know, they'll put meat. Sometimes you can do ground chicken meat. I can do beef. I can do lamb. Um, I'll put kelp in there. I do the hemp seeds. The hemp seeds are really, really good for dogs. Quinoa. I'll bulk it up putting quinoa and a lot of times if you're mixing it up, I'll put some water in there to bulk it up a little bit. I'll get, uh, like a lot of times during the summer months, if you have a lot of spinach or a lot of uh, greens, um, I'll go ahead and freeze a bunch in a bag and then you can put that in there also or I can put it in fresh. Uh, cruciferous vegetables are amazing, especially broccoli for dogs. You can get the whole broccoli, grind it up a little bit, put that in there. Wonderful for dogs. Broccoli is, I put my sprouts in there for the dogs. I just mix it all up. Just remember they need a little bit more of the meat, but then you get all that stuff and it's just, it's wonderful. So. Okay, let's see. Cats are carnivores. They are. They eat mice. <laughs> and they eat whatever they can scrounge up and we throw them some kibble. But we keep them hungry. If you guys are, don't have fat cats around your house, man, because they will not go mouse hunting for you. They will lay around and watch the bowl, and you have, like, you know, useless cats. That's the kind of stuff you're going to find in the university. <laughs> okay, Cricket asks, can I use the pickle pipes on the ACV while it's forming a scoby? No, you need to put a cloth on it because you need stuff going both ways. The pickle pipe will keep... The stuff going out, but not coming in. So you need both. Okay, so you just need a cloth on your apple cider vinegar. Oh, I'm way behind. I'm way, way behind. behind. Yeah, look at all the people sleeping good with the castor oil. Any remedies for eyes? We got a video about making your eyesight better. Type hey. an eyesight off grid with Doug and Stacy. Yeah, there's some exercises. You can look into the Bates method, B A T E S, Bates method. And uh, also, a lot of people have uh, commented and said that 
using the castor oil, castor oil, and I will say me personally that it's helped me. Um, I take my eye makeup off with the castor oil, and uh, over the years, I can tell you that my eyesight's better than it was. Like 10, really? 10 years ago. Yeah. I wish you could see your clock. So. And then Ricky says, have you ever heard of black castor oil? Yes. A lot of people say the black castor oil is uh, good for the hair and all that to grow even better. The one thing, if you have not tried black castor oil, it literally smells like a dirty ashtray. So if that offends you, then you might not like it. But it works great, too. If you guys want to get the castor oil, get the link right here, offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Hit the shop tab. And then you scroll down and you'll see the castor oil link. It's the best place to get it. They use glass bottles. Hexane free. Yes, We're wonderful. using them. Uh, they're a good company. If I find anything wrong with them, I'll let you know. But so far, so good. Okay, so everything's good. They say what they say and they do what they do. So that's good stuff. So ERGA 2016 says, using castor oil day and night, my eyebrows are going back no longer bald. See, there you go. Oh, yeah, Brian says everyone, her, him and his wife are amazed at how well it helps your skin. It's crazy. The only thing you might want, you have to get over with is because castor oil is very thick. Yeah. So when you put it on, you're like, oh, but you rub it and you just massage it. And then in a little bit, it just really does soak in. It's. What are you doing? Nothing. You sitting up too straight? Yeah, I'm looking down at this computer trying to read your questions. Please don't give cats bananas, y'all. Oh, that's fine. Well, I doubt a cat will eat a banana anyway. But she was saying on the live that you could give it to the cat, but I doubt they would eat it. They're pretty finicky. With they are. Food. Why wants to cleanse her gallbladder? Val, go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com and then hit the shop tab. And I just left it in the chat section right here. I'll do it again right here. Right there. Click that link. There, I can see it right there. I see it right on my phone. Did you hear? What? Gallbladder. How are they going to cleanse their gallbladder? You know, over the years... You know, a lot of people do gallbladder cleanses and, you know, different things. I have found, honestly, to just start eating clean in the morning, have, you know, some lemon juice and a glass of water, a little organic lemon, half of a lemon, drinking water, don't drink any soda, don't drink any, you know, I would stay away from a lot of tea. You know, if you do make some homemade bone broth. And just start eating very clean and just start nourishing your body, getting rid of stress in your life, getting away from fast food, no fried foods, and just start eating good. Maybe adding a little fermented food into your diet every day, making some kombucha or some ferments. And if you start doing these simple things daily, your body will start to heal. It's just amazing. The gallbladder is getting whacked out because we're eating processed foods overly fat foods and all that you know there's there's gallbladder cleanses where you do like the olive oil and all this kind of stuff but honestly i i just have found if you just do common sense things and you just start taking care of yourself and eating right cooking from scratch don't eat like a ton of bread you know nice meat some vegetables using good fats like ghee or you know butter um uh, or coconut oil while you're cooking having a nice salad red meat <laughs> and eating good food like that, it's just very, very, very helpful. Um, the other thing for a lot of people is uh, ap raw apple cider vinegar is good. It could help with your digestion. Um, so maybe 20 minutes before you eat, have some apple cider vinegar and some water. That's worked for many, many people, um, including myself. And then it helps to add a little acidity to your stomach to help break down the foods. So then when it goes into the small intestines... So, you know, just tr start to eat these kind of basic, simple things and see if that helps. 
Oh, you get some off comments. I mean, there's almost 6,000 people in here, yo. Everybody does not play nice. So, can you grow asparagus? I just saw something. What do you mean, can you grow asparagus? Yeah, we Anybody can, grow, can it. grow asparagus. It is Definitely. a challenge, but you can no, do no, it. No, no, it's not. It's a little bit of a challenge. No, it's not. It takes a year, years, years, years. Well, years, years. he's meaning because it, you don't, the first year, you're not going to get, it takes two years before you're going to start getting any rewards out of it. So, for a lot of us now is the time, um, you know, very early spring, late winter, it's the time you're going to start planting it. So, some people will grow it from seeds. Asparagus has male and female. So the female asparagus produces these little red berries on them. Um, and those, the female, you don't get as many. Um, the male asparagus, you're going to get. It's, you're going to get more of the actual stalks from it. So when you're doing your asparagus, you can do it two ways. If you have the berries and you have the seeds, you can do it from seeds and let them grow. And then you can plant them. Or you can also have like the live plant and you can go in and plant it and Pretty soon now you, you will start planting it um, kind of very, very, very early spring. You can start planting it. And then that way it'll start to grow and then you'll start getting it growing in the, you know, this year. And then next year you might get a few of them pop up and then the year after. And then from there on, it's just going to keep going. So the females that have the little red berries are going to spread their seeds and they're going to get a lot. So if you're going to grow asparagus, make sure you put it in its little forever home and don't put it right next to another like raised bed or an area because the wind can blow and you can have asparagus popping up where places you don't want it to grow. So generally asparagus, put it somewhere kind of by itself. Mark Gagnon, what's up, man? Good to see you. He's OG Homestead Homie. And we're coming to you live from the Learning Center, which is right next to our log cabin, which is right on top of our root cellar, which is the bomb shelter, the tornado shelter, the nuclear fallout concrete box. And this building's on top of it where we have our solar power panels and our batteries over there. You don't want that stuff in your house, you guys. Try to keep that stuff as far away from you as you can. <laughs> so that's what we do. And then we have two outlets in our cabin. Big deal. And then this room right here has some lights and a couple of outlets. And this is where we have our modem and, you know, stuff so we can contact you guys. We have a shower inside here. And this is just our little room we put together. And I built this with sticks. And then I put this little skirting on in the woods because I don't want any drywall. Yeah, he, it was a really co good idea. I like it. This turned out really, doesn't it look cool? He did a good job with that. So Jennifer Storm says, I put red pepper flakes, oregano, thyme, and garlic in my chicken feed. Yes. So one thing if a lot of guys don't know about chickens, like I do cayenne pepper in mine, the powder too. You could do red pepper flakes. That's very helpful for your chickens too. Chickens don't have the heat receptors in their mouth, so they don't know they're eating anything spicy. So you could give them hot, hot, hot stuff and they don't know. So for a lot of you guys, if you want to give them jalapeno peppers from your gardens that you don't want or whatever, that's great to do. And the cayenne is also great to add to chicken feed. That's yeah. the only way you use the stitches. If you guys get the herbal stitches, it's just for when you cut yourself or you get a gash on yourself. And that's the only time you're going to use it. It's not for helping your skin. It's not for sprinkle powder or deodorant or nothing. It's strictly for... Stopping that wound from bleeding and healing it up without getting stitches. That's what it's for. And you should get some. Everybody should have like a bunch of bottles in their preps. And give them to your family members and your friends. And you can get them at offgreenwithdougandstancy.com. <laughs> and you guys have to understand that we own the Missouri Tea Company. We started it because of you guys. And we employ several Amish families and several English families because of the love and support that you show the company by buying the tea or the tea balls or one of our books. That's the beauty of all this stuff. And then Brandy Coffin says, what kind of meat chickens do you recommend? We really like the Freedom Rangers. Yep. Um, they're from Pennsylvania. It's Mennonite farm. So, and they'll mail them right to you, right to the, in the post office. They'll come and you go and pick them up and you can get as many as you want. They are a bird that looks a bird that's kind of like orangey looking and it looks they are much more normal. They're not like crazy linebackers running after you and being so bossy. Um, they're a lot more natural. They might take a couple more weeks to grow to get to, um, you know, the weight that you want. However, it's definitely worth it because I can't stand the, the Cornish crosses. 
Destiny yeah. Davis, I don't know what happened to your elderberry cuttings if you ordered them today, because all the elderberry cuttings have been gone. We sent them out right away when we talked about it. They are long gone. So you email the Missouri Tea Company at gmail.com and we'll look up and see if you actually ordered some and then figure out what happened. I'm an OG homestead homie, and because of them, I've been. <laughs> Gosh, man. All right, we got some trolls in the house. That's pretty good. I like it. Bye -bye. Oh, yeah, Karen says that she has scar tissue in the bottom of her foot, and, and, and she's been putting the castor oil on it. I'm telling you, it, castor oil is like, <laughs> it can do so many things. It's crazy. Some lady was saying that she had back surgery, and she's been rubbing it on her back, and her back's getting better and all that, too, from it. And then, uh, oh, Sherry wants to know what do you use detergent-wise to wash clothes. So I like washing soda. And you can do washing soda. You can put a little baking soda in there also. Some Castile soap. That makes really good. I put some essential oils. That's one. I do a lot of different versions. Sometimes I'll go to the, if I go to the laundromat, let's say I have like bunches of blankets because I have, you know, a rocker washer here. So if I have all my bedding and stuff I'm going to do, the brand, if you, I'm going to buy a brand, I like Ecos, E-C-O-S. But generally I can make, a big container of it. You know, I can do a powder or I can do liquid where you can do the washing soda, the baking soda, the Castile soap, and then you can put some, a bunch of water in it. I can make a five gallon bucket of it. And that's what I use to wash around here. You don't have to buy these jugs, right? Because our friend Gary gets them for us, but he just has a friend that's a wino. <laughs> that's a gallo. And I you take the labels off of it. <laughs> it's some kind of wine that she gets. She's like, hey, do they need some more bottles? And I have, I have like five of them. I'm like, no, I'm good, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's like some bottle of wine she gets, and then we get the bottles. Well, and you guys can go to the stores, you know, <laughs> apple, juice. apple juices. There's a lot of, you can get apple juices in the cool bottles like that in a gallon. And when you go out and about, you'll see. It's pretty cool. You can get some cool bottles. Yeah, the tea ball is really cool. You like to get the tea ball. Stainless steel and uh, easy to use. Oh my gosh, man, that's a fun show tonight, man. We've covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of stuff. I gave you guys notifications. The books are A, N, and B will be shortly. You will get your books. We send out everything. Oh, Rest and Digest only has one in stock. Not now. No, we got lots of chocolate tea and lots of Rest yep. and Digest. We've lots been busy packing it. Yep. So we updated that one for you guys, so you guys can catch it later if you're watching the replay. Don't worry. Oh my gosh, 13 herbal stitches in stock. We're going to up that too for you guys. So you guys are awesome. And the stuff really does work. There's no joke about it. We get so many emails about how that stuff's working so good. Chocolate tea. Oops, out of stock. I'm going to put it back in stock for you guys. Sorry about that. I'm a little slow on my upstock here. All right. So all the tea, tea balls, everything's back in stock. If you guys ordered a candle, it's going to be a couple more weeks we're getting there. Okay. Our family makes the candles. We sell 100% beeswax candles, unrefined, awesome stuff, long burn times. But it takes a second to make them. And I'm trying to sneak in a little extra inventory <laughs> so when we say hey we got them we can actually sell some to some people who didn't get them already so please 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 be patient on the candles you'll probably get your books before the candles but we're working hard on them and then we're going to try to maybe get another melter thing and do more candles so <sighs> all right you guys can get Stacy's books on digital download if you can't afford the regular books. We did that for you guys. We ship all over. All of our products are shipped globally except for the herbal stitches because Canada and Australia and all y'all are tripping. You don't like no herbal remedies over there. If you want to learn, someone was asking about frequencies. Check out Bob Proctor. That guy knows some stuff about the frequencies. He talks about them all the time. Very educated man. Lots of good information. And you can find him on YouTube and check out some of his stuff. How many elderberry starts did you have? We had like 45. It was no big deal. We weren't really that prepared for it. We hadn't really ever talked about doing it before. This was the first time ever. 
it was a little bit of sketchiness going on. We got some peat moss and all this stuff. <laughs> but we did do it, and they're gone. So if you guys want to check out the store, it's right there for you. Off here with Doug and Stacy. Dot com you guys forward slash general store and that'll take you right to it or you can click the link and remember next week everyone be prepared have your mason jar you need a quart mason jar i would suggest a wide mouth mason jar this is your stuff for yeah, this school. What we're doing next, next week. week you need a quart mason jar wide mouth um and you make sure you have some filtered water yes gabby three toothpicks and a sweet potato an organic sweet potato. So if you don't have yours that you grew from last year, or go to the store and get a nice organic sweet potato. We have no connections with Big Berkey or Berkey filters or Berkey anything. We just use them ourselves. And I bought a lot of filters before when I found out that information about them. And man, am I glad I did. Because <laughs> you can hardly get no filters now. Oh my gosh, Elaine J says... I made the chocolate-covered stuff medjool dates and had to hide them so my husband would not eat them all at once. He said to tell he's going to get the runs. <laughs> no, he's the same way. He's so terrible about yeah, it. I, I know to stop because you will go to the bathroom and it'll be a mess. The next day you'll They're really addicting. They are like my favorite. They're so good, aren't they? They're great. And if you guys want to know, this is like the best dessert in the whole world. You get a piece of parchment paper. It's in our cookbook at Off Grid with Douglas Yeah, it's in, my, it's in my cookbook. But you get medjool dates. Them. You get medjool dates. You take the pit out. You get good organic peanut butter. You're going to put a little dollop in there. Set all your dates with the peanut butter on parchment. I put a little pan with some water in it and another pan with a bag of chocolate chips. I like the Enjoy Life brand there's no soy lecithin this is made with cane sugar and chocolate that's it and then um, it melts and then I go ahead and I drizzle over each one so they're totally covered so they kind of look like a turtle and then when you and then you put them in the refrigerator then they'll cool off and then you peel them off you can put them in a container put them in the refrigerator they are amazing everybody will love them there's a man who, him and his wife take my class and, and I told him, I brought him to class one day for all my people that take class with me. And uh, she says, we took them. It was around the holidays. They all took them and everyone loved them and her husband loves them too. So if you want good bonus points, make the chocolate um, peanut butter stuff medjool dates are so good. Susie, you should have just asked the question. I just seen you have a question, but then you didn't ask it. I do not like uh, gypsum or drywall because it's full of chemicals. And the, most of it comes from China. And I don't know if you guys remember the stories or not. When people were getting all sick because of the drywall that was coming from China. I just don't want drywall in my living quarters, really, to be honest with you. So that's what, you know, we do everything natural. So I have pine here, tongue and groove pine. In the house, we have cedar and, of course, our log cabin stuff. At mom's house, we put in tongue and groove stuff because I did not want to have any drywall. Zero. Um, Neil Log, what's the best way to take? We're not talking about taking castor oil internally. This is all external stuff. Yes. All external. Yeah, we have Bob Gordon elderberries. They're, Ad, they're Adams. And we have Adams, Adams too. Yeah, those are the two. Those are two. Bob popular. Gordon, Bob Gordon, and Adam. Yes. Quiet Honda generators are the way to go. Honda makes the most quietest, bestest generators. That's my opinion. And I've been through a lot of <laughs> generators. 15 years we've been out here living off generators. Hi, Carla. Carla Valdez. All right, y'all. This is your last chance. If you want to get some information, uh, questions answered, leave them in all caps. No garlic for dogs. We give our dog a little bit of garlic, but Why? be careful no, out there. No, no, no. Um, no, no, no. You need just do your research on garlic because you know you look at these no, studies. I'm telling you, yeah, that's not right. So uh, do your research on garlic. A lot of the stuff, you know, when they do these studies and they put them out, you know, they were giving animals like I don't know how many bulbs of garlic. You know, with my dog Molly and all my dogs, I've always had my way of helping as a bug repellent and fleas and ticks and all that kind of stuff. I give her dark garlic starting in the spring and it goes through the, you know, summer months. I'll go quite a few weeks and then maybe I'll stop two weeks and I'll start her up again. I give her, you know, like a nice clove. I crush it like fresh garlic and I put it in her food every day. 
and it helps tremendously. But do your research, look into garlic, um, you know, and, and read about it and you'll learn. But a lot of this stuff, you know, you got to also look where a lot of this is these things that come and you talk about your health and these studies that come, they're funded by the pharmaceutical companies and all that. Scientists agree with 90% of the people who fund them. <laughs> I mean, come on, you guys. So yeah, do your research into garlic and, and dogs because it's, uh, I, I mean, I've done it for the past 20 years. You plant years. your garlic in fall time. Too late now. Fall time is when you plant garlic. Honda generator. Whatever one is for your capacity. I don't know what you're trying to run over there. You got to go try to figure it out. But they have a little one you can carry like a little briefcase. It's a 2000. And that runs quite a bit of stuff. It can run a, a refrigerator and stuff. But, you know, it doesn't have a big as gas tank. Uh, then you have a 2,000, a, a 3,500, a 5,000. You know, you get a little more fuel capacity, a little more power to, uh, you know, charge up your stuff. Elizabeth says, do you use ghee as a moisturizer? I just got a pound of Amish butter to make ghee for the first time. <clears throat> so if you have a pound of butter, you're going to get a pint of ghee when you make it. Um, yeah, what I do is I'll use it when I'm cooking, but then if some drip on, I mean, I put it on my hands. You can put it, I can put it in my hair. Yes, it makes a good moisturizer also. Elderberry, the first year on the elderberry, don't prune them to the ground. The second year and after, prune them to the ground. Is anybody out there? What's up, Bob Bader? We're out here. We're out here, homie. All right. Oh, look, Diane. So Diana says that she um, has rosacea and started using castor oil, castor oil and noticed a huge difference. Also, I quit using foundation. I found it made my rosacea flare up. Yeah, it's important if you guys to, to find a good organic makeup company. And there's quite a few out there. Yeah, salted butter or regular butter to make the ghee. You can do either one. Man, we're just answering questions, hanging out. It's already 8.30. Oh, there's a fly in here. No flies on us. I got, when the weather got a little warmer here, there was like five flies in my car, in my truck, and I cannot get them out of it. Yeah, it's an American one. If you guys are in America and you see elderberry anywhere, that's American elderberry. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uh, no, you can't order any pre-orders. We'll have them next year, though. We're going to have a lot of them next year. I underestimated it all, y'all. I keep forgetting, like, there's, like, two million of you guys. And only two of us. Uh, I guess you can answer all. Lord bless. I'm trying, Teresa. If they're in all caps, that's the way we do it. Will the castor oil help a burn? Aloe vera will. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, the uh, bentonite clay is really good for burns. Just you got to keep it moist. It's important for that. But generally, like right after you burn, like right when it, you get it, put cool water over it right away, and then you know you can go ahead and put some aloe vera on it. I know a lot of people like um, an essential oil. If you put a drop or two of lavender oil, lavender is very good for burns also. Um, and then after the initial part, you know, you could maybe put some castor oil on it and try it. But generally for me, I'll put the cool water on it. I'll put aloe vera with a little drop or two of lavender. Oh, dang. She did order them. You guys are, the Murphys are messing up over there. I'm sorry. Uh, here, Desert, Destiny Davis, we're going to get you your elderberry. I will go out there and get some sticks and cut them for you and get them out the door for you tomorrow. Okay. Sorry about that. Man, I'm going to get them Murphys now. Dang. I'm going to write your number. I got to write your number down. Unless they got shipped. It's got shipped? No. It's not shipped? Oh. Partially filled. Oh. Oh, because they're probably waiting for a bat. No. That's why. The Homestead booklet. Oh, yeah. You had the Homestead booklet, too. That's why. But she didn't get her elderberry cuttings, either. No, she wouldn't because they're waiting for all that. No. Partially filled. She got some of it. Oh. 
She got everything except the homestead booklet and the pre-sale elderberry cuttings and the homesteading booklet. Don't you worry, girl. We got you. That's how I roll. 229 is going to work. I got to send that. 229 one one. I got to write that down. Take care of my business now. My people. I love my people. I take care of my peoples. Yes, Melissa says, Aldi has lots of bioengineered pre-packed foods to read the labels and buy organic single ingredient foods to stay healthy. It is, I'm going to tell you, it's so crazy. I, I do. I love to go to the grocery store and I like to read the labels. When I go, it takes me a long time because I like to read everything, just kind of know what's going on. So years ago, you know, you find the brands and stuff that you like. And then, and they're like, that's a good one. That's a healthy, that's a clean one. And then you'll go back and you look at it again and they're adding all this other junk to it. It's crazy. They keep changing it all the time. So you really have to constantly... Flip it over when you pick it up, read the labels to make sure that there's no yeast extract, which sounds good. And it's the same thing as like MSG, which is an excitotoxin that tr tricks the brain. You don't want natural colors or flavors in there. It's the same thing. It can be a form of MSG or excitotoxins. They can be a list of over 3,000 things in there that you don't want in your body. You just want things that you can pronounce, you know. Just simple things. You don't want chemicals. <laughs> Dang, girl. You was trying to get them elderberries, too. And she said, I was refreshing my screen for two hours straight getting them elderberry clippings, Doug. I got you, girl. <laughs> Did you ever put raw eggs in your hair? I, I think I've done a mask probably with that. I haven't done it in a, in a little bit. But, yeah, I do with eggs. I have. I don't put hardly no faith in stuff that says organic. Not after what I've been witnessing over the last four or five years, man. No. That's why I'm just telling her it's, it's so hard to even do anything outside of the house now. Because we know our food here is good and pure to the best of our ability, of course, with this spray stuff and everything. But you know what I mean? No process, no, no foreign stuff in it. You know, it's right from the seed, right to our face. Like if you were going to get... If you were going to start to help somebody get their gut in check, like a mom and their young kid, what would be like five of the first things you would tell them to do? Uh, okay. So one thing, kids are a little, it's a little harder. So, you know, maybe start doing, I would, you know, kombucha, adding just some fermented foods in there. You don't want to change and be too drastic because people are like, ah, just simply adding, and I'll tell you, when I work with the Amish, they're doing a lot of stuff. You're seeing them go to Walmart a lot more now, and they're starting to have a lot more health problems, and I would do workshops with them and try to get them to do some things. And, you know, they're steeped in tradition and a lot of the foods and stuff that they make, and they're not going to change. But I did find what helped just by adding some type of fermented food. So if you're making kefir, homemade yogurt, um, uh, Go ahead and add, you know, if you make homemade sauerkraut, homemade fermented ketchup. My fermenting book has over 100 recipes. Over 100! And there's so many, and there'll be something that somebody will like because everybody's different. There's also fermented, like, things with honey. So I like, like, pomegranate seeds. You could put honey fermented blueberries. You could do all these little bitty things with honey. You can do condiments. You can do fermented ketchup, fermented mustard. You can do fermented mayonnaise. I mean, you can do all these salsa so all these things you can start adding to your diet. Um, and just like on a hamburger, you can put the fermented ketchup on there. Or on your taco night, you can do the fermented salsa. You can have a, a drink of kombucha. And if you don't want to make it, you can buy it at every store has it now. You're going to get billions of probiotics in your kombucha. So just by adding some fermented foods and start with that and see how it uh, helps, then go ahead and go and try it fast. And also get rid of some stuff like dairy from the store Things that are hurting your gut, right? Processed foods. Pasteurized dairy. Yeah. Sodas. Uh, you know, just stuff like yeah. that. Get you rid can of the eliminate sodas. that stuff. It's that's what's killing your bacteria. And then you're when, even if you drink the kombucha, you can't put enough good stuff in there to fight off what's being killed on the regular. Because you want most of us have too many bad bacteria in our gut. So by putting the good bacteria is good and then start eating a little more clean. So no processed foods. No, lots of, lots of sugars, all the, and then the candy, stay away from colors and dyes. 
You know, look at the candies. It's just disgusting, all of the things and chemicals. Basically, you're just eating a chemical cocktail. I call it chemical cocktails of death when you read a lot of these labels. So make sure you're cooking it from scratch. And here's another one. You want to stay away from anything enriched. So when you read on the back of the labels and it says enriched, they're putting in all these synthetic vitamins, especially folic acid, which is synthetic. We want the real form of it, which would be folate. So like if you're getting, if you're going to eat pasta, don't flip it over. And if it says, you know, whatever, the wheat, and then it'll tell you like thiamine, folic acid, and it'll have all the list of all the different things on there. That's going to be enriched with all those things. You don't want that. So if you read some of them that are imported from Italy and it'll say, you know, just like with the Durham meat, wheat or the Seminolina wheat, and then that is it, that's a better choice, okay? You flip it over and it says enriched flour. <clears throat> it's enriched. It's been depleted of all the good stuff and they're adding junk stuff back into it to give you Why do they do that, y'all? Why do they steal everything that God put in there good for your body, steal it away and then add it back in? <laughs> So like, so like, and then everybody's sick, and you got you got all these wheat allergies and food allergies. <laughs> so, okay, let's. So like, uh, like pita bread. Like if you flip over and you want to get some bread, it'll just say like whole wheat flour, salt, and water. You know what I mean? You have to go through and look. And there's certain breads like uh, if you get a good authentic kind of pita bread that'll be better for you. You know what I mean? Compared to enriched. So try to stay away from enriched things if you have to do breads. Don't do enriched. <coughs> just keep looking. Ezekiel bread is a great, it's a sprouted wheat bread, but it's in the refrigerated section. Sometimes you have to toast it for it to taste halfway decent. There's other sprouted wheat breads that you can buy. Um, and just eat as clean as you can just by making these little bitty choices. Don't eat ice cream every single night. It's very acidic. <laughs> every single night. Yeah, there's a lot of people They do. do. That's a routine. It becomes your routine. Y'all, if you want to improve your life, if you want to really do anything, you're going to have to break your paradigm. You've been programmed in subconsciously. You don't even know it. And you're not going to change until you break the paradigm. I'm going to talk to you guys this week in some videos about using this negative energy, this negative news, these negative things that are going on around us, how you can use those to your advantage, right? It doesn't have to be doom and gloom. When I bring you guys this information, this information is supposed to be like shaking you up to make you change your paradigm and get you on the road to you know where you're supposed to be going and how you're supposed to be living per scriptures and per your own beliefs that you've just been hijacked. You know well, I mean? Apple 9 says, I stopped refined sugar, felt like crap, and then absolutely amazed, amazing, never going back. It's true. You know, you get in these funks and you just start doing these habits, and that's what it is. It's a habit. And when you start getting away from it and you start feeling like you're supposed to feel, it's amazing. And how badly the carbohydrate, high carbohydrate type foods, like the sugars and like a lot of the enriched flours like that, how they just make you feel so blessed. And you're just tired. You don't have any energy. You should be able to be jumping and doing all this kind of stuff and feeling really good. So look into that. You know, good, you know, leafy greens. Lots of Christopher's vegetables are very good for you. You know, steam some broccoli. You know, steam some cauliflower. Get you some carnivore diet. Get you some good, clean beef and get that red blood cells in you. Cold pressed. Queen of Thrones. Yeah, that's the what we have. That's what we. That's on our thing. It is cold pressed. It's, that is okay. It's hexane free. Yeah. Yeah. Loud and proud. You got that right. No shame to my game. Yeah, yeah. and again, people remember we're castor oil. We're talking it externally. external uses. No, they stopped doing cold pressed. You better get your facts straight. It's hexane free. It's hexane free, but you don't know about the cold press, then they'll say no now. Go get the bottle. You want to go read it? It's right there. No, I know. Well, my other one, other one, some other ones that they have are. Oh. 
The notice is, we got notices that you need to watch in front of this video. <laughs> the Homesteading Life booklet is in. If you order this booklet, it is coming to your mailbox before the end of the week. Okay? Already in, already being shipped out. The Remedy book is at the printers. Don't ask me about the book, y'all. I cannot make it appear just because you ask. And I don't call those people every day, but it's at the printers. We had Christmas. We had weather. They closed for over a week because of the weather. And as soon as we get it, it'll be out the door to you, which is probably this week coming up or next week tops. So both books will be in your you know, mailbox by this month, right? Trust me. Said the spider to the fly. <laughs> so it's expeller plus hexane free. Yeah. Expeller, what is it? Expeller press. What's that mean? It's just how it's processed. And so they don't do cold hexane, press, it's expeller ex press. Expeller press. It's a better way. So like if you look at expeller oils, you know, like it's a, like expeller pressed sunflower oil, that's going to be a better processing as just plain sunflower oil. Well, what's the difference in the process? It's just how it's, 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 it's least if they don't do as much. Oh, yeah. And then, um, what was I going to say? Was, I was going to read something off. Because we have a sub pump oh. in our root cellar. VL McIntyre says, so cheesecloth on the SCOBY. So when you're doing apple cider vinegar, a cheesecloth is not going to be, it's got too many holes. The holes are too big. You need to put like a cotton cloth, like the thickness of an undershirt, like a t-shirt or like a thin sheet, something like that. Because you don't want any flies. You're going to get like little fruit flies and stuff. You don't want that. So cheesecloth is going to be too, too holy. And then one thing, someone's talking about a dog with ear problems. And if you guys are buying stuff at the Missouri Tea Company right now, make sure you're filling out your email address so you get notifications from the Missouri Tea Company so we can keep you up to date. A lot of people are saying, well, I don't even know what's going on with my remedy book. And I'm like, I've sent out three emails about your remedy book. We talk about it every single Sunday night on the live shows. I mean, I don't know your phone number. I can't just call you. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, put your email address in there, and then you'll get notifications. Tammy, talking about black seed oil thoughts, um, I can tell you countless amounts of people who had great success with it for their blood pressure and some lots of other things. So, yeah, always do your research on it. Now, you guys, serious business, you need to come see us at the Homesteading Life Conference. We didn't really talk about that that much tonight. But Stacy and I are, um, you know, we hold this conference this year three times. We're going to have a conference in May, the 17th and 18th. You can get your tickets now. We're almost sold out. If you can't make that event, we're going to have another one in August, the 25th and 26th. Yep, 25th and 26th. It's the last Sunday, Monday in August. And then Stacy will have an October 4th and 5th woman's retreat. All of our stuff is limited seating because we want to give you the most attention we can. So get your tickets before they're gone. NC says, I put an additional cotton hanky over the pickle pipe, kind of like a jar bonnet because scared of bugs. Uh, you don't need to because the, nothing pickle, can go in. the pickle pipe is so little, you won't have any problems. I've yeah. never had, and I mean never, and I have like, I'll have 50 ferments on my, my stove in the, in the summer, so I don't think you need to worry about that. Trudy, you got to refresh your screen. Man, not, look, we're losing viewers now. It's now it's at 4,900 viewers. We're like 54. Everybody's getting tired and they're leaving. So we're going to say goodnight. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, we've got to say goodbye. I don't know the words, but I'll make them up and try. Ba bum ba boom. Oh, man. Bandana Grandma. Best crocheter in North America. Yeah, totally. Oh, she made me those beautiful ponchos. Why don't you come gloves. out and be a vendor at the May 17th and 18th conference, Bandana. Yeah. Bring your stuff on out here. And you can, you know, we don't charge for those vending spots like a lot of people do. And we want you to, you know, sell a lot of your stuff. So if you want to, just email me, homesteadinglifeconference at gmail.com. And let me know. We'd love to have you. And if you guys know anyone that does vending that sells stuff for their homestead, tell them to get a hold of me. We're having some vendors 
and we'll have some Amish and Mennonite vendors and stuff, and we'll be trying to get some speakers from them lined up, which is, you know, kind of a little difficult, but we're getting there. And uh, we're also going to have some other good speakers. A, a lot of we're going to be butchering live, doing everything right there, hands on, so you can ask questions and learn right there. Oh, look at Paula Odell. She says, I've been eating good foods and following what Doug and Stacey are teaching since last May, and I have been taking off three meds and two others, lower doses. Doc was shocked. Doc was shocked. He's like, what's going on here? You're like, I don't know. These people on the internet told me to stop eating processed food, get some sunshine, put my feet in the dirt, and uh, drink some kombucha, and I'll be doggone. I'm three medicines down, and I'm going for the rest. And he's like, hold on. Don't get too good at what they're telling you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Food at the conference. Uh, we're going to have food at the conference. Bring your food. If you guys are particular about food, bring your food. Bring your food. There's no camping, no RVing at the conference. So it'll have to be in your vehicle with your ice chest or something. Uh, there will be an ice machine close by that you guys can purchase ice there. <laughs> so you can load up your coolers. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, the food, we got food trucks. I'm, I'm working on food trucks. I mean, it's a hot mess. I try to explain to you guys, we live out in the rural kind of rural area. We have a population of about 2000 people less actually. So people don't want to come out this far. And we don't have no food trucks, but I got some people coming up. We have a, there's a Mexican restaurant in town and a Chinese place. Uh, you know, I'm not vouching for enough, <laughs> but you can go there. And then we're going to have the, the, Fairgrounds guys are going to make food for you guys, burgers and brats and that kind of stuff. And it's all beef from their farm because I told them we're pretty particular. And they're going to have some pork there too. And that'll be pork. For Everything will be from the farm. Nothing will be bought at Walmart and it's fed to you guys on that thing. Uh, food trucks, I don't know. And then the um, we're going to have the sun oven guys coming. And he's bringing the world's largest sun oven. And Doug and Stacy are going to pack it full of chicken and potatoes and corn and, and, and carrots and everything. And we're just going to give that food away. And so, you know, you should be all right. We try to take care of our people. We really do. But the free food thing will be off the chain. And everyone just hopes it's going to be a sunny day. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, you got the conference. Homesteadinglifeconference.com Then you have the University, right? University dot off grid with Doug and Stacy dot com. If you want to be learning more than just what we do here on the YouTube, we're going to make it a lot more personable. We're going to be really doing the whiteboards and give you guys some homeworks and all this kind of stuff. So that's really good too. And then off grid with Doug and Stacy dot com forward slash general dash store forward slash or just off grid with Doug and Stacy dot com and hit the shop tab. For the teas, for the books, all the good information, the homesteading uh, booklet, the off-grid booklet. If you ever wanted to live a more sustainable, like debt-free life <clears throat> that's rewarding, living off-grid has been that for us. And uh, it's been really fantastic. So, those, we gave you all your resources. We talked to you guys for how long tonight? Over one hour, over one hour, even when Stacy was late, I still yeah, carried the weight. I put it all on my shoulders and carried us into the to the show. And she showed up. Oh. Can't change the subject. MC Peculiar says, have I heard of soap nuts? Yeah. Yeah, I we use them. I use soap nuts, too. <laughs> we I use them. I do. I, I, like, I do use those. I, you can do, like, four or five in a little bag. And you throw them in the water. I use the soap nuts for just like regular clothes. Like if he had really dirty clothes, I'm not going to use soap nuts by themselves because they're not going to clean quite as good. Or I'll use a little bit of detergent with the soap nuts, but they'll last a, a few washings um, and then they'll kind of get all, they kind of just shrink down. You'll see. And you can tell that it's time to change it, but you get a big bag of them and they're natural. They come from the soap nut tree. So soap, soap nuts work great too for, for laundry detergent. Oh my goodness. And we won't share, we won't give you that much homework. And, and this is unlike school, like you don't have to do it. <laughs> we won't spank you with a ruler or put you in timeout or call your parents, but you know, you'll just be missing out on some extra learning opportunity. Oh, I saw that about that. 
That was her. Oh, Jennifer, I found a used off-grid washer like mine for $60. Jennifer. One more hour? <laughs> Come on, Rex. <sighs> Jennifer got a, our washing machine for $60. Man, that was a good deal. That's a score, How Jennifer. Much, I think we got ours for like 50 or 60 are bucks, 100 bucks. Are you, no, I'm... I mean, oh, which one no, are you talking, talking about? about? The old one. The old one? Oh, maybe the that old one. Old Maytag yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah. I Not that, that one. That's stainless steel. Well, maybe she did. No. No Is full Freedom belly. Ranger I don't the have name no of the full website? Belly. <laughs> so, Freedom Ranger, belly. it's called Freedom Ranger Hatcheries. Yes. So, go there. What is it? My husband was going to buy one. It costed 35 the water jug. What? So you got a good deal? On what? What's that? I don't know. Yeah, it, once you get sunny outside, it covered back up. It's true. Yeah, we don't eat pork, but we don't push our beliefs or nothing on you guys. And some of you guys will want to come to that thing and eat pork. I mean, it's cool, but we're not going to, like, you know, Shun you or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I told the guy he can make some up. You know, he's probably sell some. I said most of it would probably be the beef, though. Uh, well, beef stuff, though. So, <clears throat> I'm just trying to give him a heads up. No, we don't have a book for castor oil usage. But if you get the castor oil through our link, I'm pretty sure it comes with directions and some kind of information for you. If you guys, you go follow on Instagram, be well queen. Be well, queen, and you'll find you'll get lots of uses for it. H O N D A Honda, like the car on the road. Honda, Honda. Oh, uh, if you want to get a farm that ships meat, I think if you go look up Polyface Farm, they actually sell meat right to your door. That's, Amos uh, Miller did too. I thought, did he? I no, Amos he Miller's close. I know he is, but he used to. Yeah. But uh, I think you can get it there. And you can look online for, you know, if you plug in those words, you'll find someone like local in your area that, that does meat. No, yeah. Raymond, you cannot use your kombucha or scoby from your, uh, to make ACV. They're two different They're beasts. Different. Yeah. See, Doug knows stuff too. If you know, if you'd be amazing, if you guys just listen and you get around the stuff, remember we talked about being repetitive, the stuff just sinks in, man. It just, I can just tell you because I know. Calvin says, can I use butter that I buy at Kroger's? Um, no, make... the classes won't be like that. It'll just be, we'll put the information up there. You do everything at your own pace. Except for Wednesday nights, we'll have a live show. So, if you're going to make ghee, yes, you can buy your butter at the grocery store. Um, the best butter to get, if you want the most nutritional value, is if you get grass-fed butter. Kerrygold. Um, yeah, there's Kerrygold, Organic Valley. Um, and if not, I mean, if you can't do that, and you can use butter, but read the label, like flip the butter over because some butter has other things in it, like Lando Lakes. They put natural flavor in there. Some yeah, they kick the powders. Indian out and put the natural flavors in. Um, but read it. You just want it to be like cream and salt. So just make sure that's what it is if you're going to use that. All right, y'all. Hopefully, we will see you at the university. And uh, we got some, we were supposed to. Oh, when are on. we starting the live shows at the university? Maybe I got to talk week? to the lady at the um, thing on Monday. I have it on my board, 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. I talk to her. And when I talk to her, I need to know how I send out bulk emails. And then I need to know how to do the live streaming. So I'll have that information. And then when I have it, you'll get a bulk email. <laughs> if you're already in the university, I'll send you guys out a bulk email. It'll be my first one. Uh, so I'll get that out to you guys. But I have a meeting with her tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. We're going to go over some more of this stuff. You know, we're all kind of learning this, too, at the same time. So if you guys have questions, just reach out to us in the comments. And then we'll get back to you guys. And like I said, we're learning it, too. So just be patient and just keep going there and watching the videos over and over. And, you know, just get your money's worth. You know what I mean? We're going to put the information up there. We're going to populate it with some solid stuff. But it all is going to boil down to you, right? It's going to boil down to you taking the initiative, 
you writing down the material, you watching it over and over again, you whipping out the stuff, doing the ACV, making the kombucha, making everything that we teach you. It's up to you because the most capable hand is at the end of your wrist. And Rebecca says, uh, Rebecca Andes, what will help with bone spur? Lots of people say that the, the castor oil has helped tremendously with that too. So. And there's no lodging recommendations for the first conference in May. You are on your own. Put on your big girl pants and your big boy pants and use Google and find what works good for you. And it's not going to be pretty. That's why I don't have any recommendations because there's hardly anything around here. And because there is around. Because yeah. you're waiting. Okay. A lot of stuff's already sold out because we've got like one hotel around here that's kind of close. And it's probably sold you out. You might have to drive a half an hour. It's Yeah, I mean, you're going to drive yeah, a little okay. more. But you have to find what works for you. I can't have all the recommendations. Even Hannibal would be a good place to stay. It would be about 35, 40 minute drive. But there's a lot of places to stay there. So that would be good too. But yeah, you guys are going to have to do some of your own stuff. We're going to provide the venue, the talent, the information, the everything. And you're going to have to find how to get there and get yourself a pillow to sleep on. No camping, no RV sites at the thing this year. We have to run the first year. Let me see how it all breaks loose. And then we'll make adjustments for the second year. That's how you usually do it. If your jar broke, who knows why? Sometimes they just do. Which jar? She was fermenting her sauerkraut with her fermenting. It has nothing to do with the mason tops lid. So it's just your jar just is jar. Most compromised. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's it. That's it. And then maybe if you sterilize it first too and then did the stuff, maybe that could have been it. Temperature change, whatever. All right, you guys. We do love you guys like family. That's why we talk so like, you know, open. That's why we're so open. Oh, yeah, I had the Zoom feature on tonight. Did I? That's why we were blurry. People were oh, no, it's blurry. not. It's oh, not it wrong. looks crazy. It looks very dark. Well, my phone's dying, so it's saving oh, the battery. Oh, okay. All right, you guys. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. I'll have a video for you guys tomorrow, I promise. And you guys aren't going to believe it. It's actually mainstream news now. <laughs> I've, I've been warning you guys. I did a video about this stuff last year, and everybody thought, Doug's crazy. And now it's mainstream news. I'll have that for you tomorrow. And if you just got here, the notification is the Homesteading Life booklet is here and going to be in your mailbox by next week. All right? Everyone will have theirs by next week. And Stacy's Remedy book is a week or two away, and it will be in your um, mailboxes as well. Look for everything to be smashed in your mailbox by the end of the month. And we're going to get old uh, Destiny. You're going to get your elderberries. Stacy's going to go find your cuttings right now because we've got just a few left in a little pile. So we're going to sift through there and get you figured out. All right. The most capable hands at the end of your wrist. Make sure you use it to hit that thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Do that, please. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. And make sure you're subscribed. They're unsubscribing you.